Puff Daddies United. Um, it's the end of October. The election is coming up. Vote. Right now it's about 40 degrees and change. And today, unfortunately, I've begun to uh, winterize the tracker. This year, fishing bite was not that great. Uh, the lake never froze over last year. Lake Erie, so all of its tributaries, everything else, um, the spawns were off. Uh, it rained pretty much every single day until June and was cold and then got very hot and then very cold again very quickly. So um, just the amount of days that we went out and didn't catch much overlapped uh, the amount of days where we went out and had good times. Um, I have a few more edits to post from this season um, so i apologize for the lack of content i have probably eight or nine days worth of complete footage where we didn't catch anything maybe one fish so if you want us to put up 12 14 minute videos of us catching three fish total i will just let me know in the comments um, other than that it was a down year with covid as well um, you know uh, a lot more people were also out fishing um, which made the conditions you know a little more cramped and uh, good spots were fished more, meaning less fish for the guys that are always out there. Um, all that good stuff. So, unfortunately, I've begun, like I said, winterizing the tracker. Um, I sold the uh, smoker craft and picked her up brand new back in March. Go watch the previous edits. They're all on the channel. Uh, picking it up, organizing it, breaking it in, all that. Um, so we're gonna, I'm gonna just walk you through with what I'm doing. It's not gonna be anything fancy, just how to winterize your bass boat, and uh, we'll go from there. So uh, let me just get started, I guess. <clears throat> so I guess it's hard to see because it's not out of the box. I got my brand new Dowco cover. Um, it's about a $500 cover. So it is a, it did come with the, the package. I bought it with the boat. It is specifically for the Pro 170 with the jet drive, if you could read all that schmutz in here, per 170 jet drive. So um, it is specifically made for this boat, for the, the beam, for the length, for the width, for the motor itself with no prop, because it's a jet. So I'm gonna be putting that on tomorrow. Keep, I do keep it in the garage, but garages get dust, all that other stuff. So I'm gonna be cleaning the heck out of it today and tomorrow, I already started and uh, we'll be covering it and keeping it in the garage. So no matter what bodies of water you fish, the ocean, a river, a pond, you're gonna get debris on the boat. With the blue, it really shows up. Motor case is dirty, trough is dirty, windscreen and splash screen's dirty. So we're gonna detail her up. In the meantime, I've cleaned out all my compartments, my main storage, you can see it's filthy in there. Uh, the live well, which I usually use as a cooler um, for snacks and other... I keep jars of beer nuts on the boat and a bunch of snacks you can see right there. I keep them in here. It's a live well, and when we go out and fish, fill it with ice. Um, the rod lock, and you can see that was dirty. The rod locker, there's all kinds of schmutz in here. Underneath storage. Um, they got underneath the seat. I cleaned everything out of there as well except the fire extinguisher, the main rear storage dirty in there, and the battery compartment. I'm gonna be taking the batteries out here shortly. So I have the vinyl decks, so I can spray it down completely, have it drain right out here, and it comes out, I can bilge, and it'll come out the, the plug drain off the back of the boat. Um, so I'm gonna spray it all down. I'm gonna vacuum first, clean out every compartment, get it spit shine before I cover it. Um, all my supplies from the boat are just on the shelves for now. My life jackets, seat pedestals, foam blocks, rope, tripod, anchor, uh, some storage planos, all this gear. If you want to see what I keep in my boat as far as equipment beyond fishing stuff, go watch my previous video of how I organize my bass boat or whatever. Um, so I took everything, the paddle, the net, the lights, seat, took everything out of the boat. And then, like I said, tomorrow morning, I'm going to be cleaning it down to the bone and uh, putting everything back in as I always store it um, and then covering it up for the winter. So. so everyone always says run it out of gas. Um, 
which is bad for your motor to run it completely out. Drain the gas out. I'd like a little bit of gas in there so when I put new gas in the springtime and run it through the tank, I'm not gonna, I don't have to pump my ball and flood the motor. Um, so I did run it for about five extra, 10 extra minutes intentionally. I went out last week with about a half a tank, ran it down very low. And let me show you how much I have left. So the level, the motor's obviously on, or the battery's obviously on. Um, the level I'm at, even straight on or at an angle, is at the point to where if I were on the water, I would clearly be having to, or should be, if you're smart, heading to the ramp. Um, I mean, if you ever let it get below a quarter tank, you know, you're putting yourself at risk. So I got it down to about there. Um, a lot of people want to put stabilizer, sea foam. Um, one thing you can do is put high octane gas in as your last tank and then run that down to about where I did. Um, just being with the higher octane, it'll keep its uh, keep it'll keep a little bit longer than you know 87 or 89. Um, but it's still gas. It is uh, October 24th today. Usually I fire the boat up for the first time beginning of March, so November, December. So for about five months, um, she won't be started. I am taking the batteries out, which I'll get to next. Um, so I won't be able to crank her over in the winter, but with that just minuscule, you know, it's an 11 gallon tank. So there's probably a gallon and a half at the most in there. Um, and when I go start her up and take her out for the first time next year, I'm gonna top it off. Um, so I'm not really worried. Um, about you know stabilizer all that other stuff you can if you want it doesn't hurt but I've also heard that the stabilizer and all that when you actually run it again it burns at a very high temperature and that could not bode well for your inner workings of your motor um, that's just what I've heard if you disagree or you've heard something else you tell me I'm not a mechanic um, I have owned a bass boat for six seven years and I've had plenty of time to do all these things on my old boat my new boat um, it never had any issues so this is my you can hate on me or you can argue or whatever i'm open to new things just uh tell me what you do or what you've heard or what you think this is my information giving to you so so this is the last time i'm gonna start the motor for the year and then i'm gonna take out the batteries so Okay, so that's it. So that's the last time I'll hear her in 2020. I'll take out the batteries. So I'm recording. It's bright. I got my headlamp on just because it's gloomy out. I'm in my garage. That's the only light in the garage. It's a pain in the ass. Um, so I'm going to have to get in here and ratchet these batteries out. This is the first time. Obviously, I bought the boat in March. This is the first time I've done this. It's very clear what goes where, but I'm going to use blue painter's tape. I just put a little identifier on this power coupling and that power coupling a 15 second thing that will save me potentially 20 minutes in the spring so it is a tight fit um the gas tanks here they engineered it a little weird but i'm gonna get them out and then i'll show you how i've been told and how i've always stored my batteries for the winter so give me a minute So you can see with the headlamp, there's no room behind here. And then they have this one vertical and there's no room behind it. So somehow I'm gonna have to snake these out of here. So hang on a second, this is gonna be a challenge. And the gas things are there, I got no room for nothing. Holy crap. All right, hang on. Looking at it, this is the crank battery which holds the motor and the accessories. And this is the auxiliary battery which does the Minn Kota. So crank for the motor and accessories, the auxiliary for the Minn Kota <laughs> and all that. Um, so I had to get this big hoss out of here before I could get this one out, but this one's in the way. So it took me about 15 minutes, but I got it. And the gas tanks right there's just no space. I'd rather have a 10 gallon tank and have the extra six inches of room for this. All right, now I'm gonna label the batteries just so I know what goes where when I come back. And then I'm gonna take them downstairs and store them and I'll show you that. Holy crap, what a chore. Again, so here's the cranking battery. And on here I have crank for the crank cables, for the, the motor, and then A for the accessories. And then in here I have C 
and then A, the four separate eyelets, and they're taped together. So when I come back in the spring, grab these two, hook them up here, know where they're going, and I'm good. Same thing here. This is the min, and I have min on the interstate battery. So it's dirty down in here, which is why taking them out and cleaning them. This boat was bought in March, so it is brand new, but you know, the plugs are never a thousand million percent watertight. This is where water always will. There's a bit of standing water. So clean it all out, good to go. Now let me show you how I'm gonna store these for the winter. I'm gonna wipe them down real quick first. Okay, so we are down in the basement. Both batteries cleaned up nice. What I've always been told and what I've always done is put them in the basement or in the garage if you have a well insulated garage. Mine is not. If that was the case, I would have just kept them in the boat. Um, put them on a piece of wood. So I've done this five years with the old boat. This is the sixth or seventh year I've owned. So whatever, I've done it at least five years. Got the outlet right above it. I'm gonna charge them up full and just leave them right down here. It's the heated back part of my basement. Uh, you know, the basement's fully finished and livable. So these will sit back here all winter. I'll charge them up full, then check the levels every two, three weeks, give them a little trickle charge and they will not, um, you know, run dead out in the cold. This will extend the life of them by at least a year, if not two. There, I'd say they should last around three years anyway, but if I, you can get four or five out of them, you always trade in your batteries and get, you know, 30 bucks off your new one when they're dead, but why have to buy a new one if you don't have to, so. So the Minn Kota battery, which loses power faster because we use the Minn Kota more than the crank, the crank automatically recharges itself with the motor on. Charging, charge them up full. By this evening, they'll both be charged full. Check the level once every two, three weeks, and just keep them going all winter. They'll never be below 75, 80, 90%, probably not even below 90%, so. Bring her out early in the morning. Clean her real, real well. You can see she's dirty. Put a couple scratches on it this year. I took her out. I picked her up March, first week of March. Uh, I have it all logged, engine hours and the days of the route. I fished on this boat, we did 17 times this year. I have it all marked down. Put about 20 running hours on the motor, about 19 and change. So 17 times in March, April, May, June, July, August. So 17 times in seven months. That's not including Lake X where we can't use her in all the pond missions. So I got over 30 days of fishing in this year. Um, put a couple scratches on it. These are from the river when the river's flowing and we're trying to put it back on the trailer. You have no choice but to come in straight and the river coxia hit the bunk a little bit. So not thrilled about it, but it is a aluminum bass boat with a jet about it for the rivers. It's gonna get scratched up a little bit. One thing I don't like about the trackers, um, what, probably my only complaint, is that the way they mounted the Minn Kota, which is fine, um, when you bring it up, you have no choice but to have it rub along the very tip of the bow. So it's a little scratched up, but that's okay. I'm not super mad about it, but I would have mounted it maybe a little further forwards to prevent the rubbage. You literally cannot avoid it. Any tracker owner that says they can avoid it, show me, please, because there's no earthly way. Um, just a couple tiny dings along the, the gunnel, nothing special. And then there's one more, this little mini guy, you can barely even see it. Same thing, coming in on the river. Um, my only other complaint too would be, besides that, these bunks, this carpet's not the most durable and underneath it, it's just hard wood. So I'm gonna I have some extra turf up there. I turfed my back stairs for the dogs. I'm gonna wrap these in turf next year so it'll be just nice and smooth going on so I won't scratch it. Other than that though, it's in great shape for 17 times one year. I'll get back with you tomorrow, but I just wanted to do a video. It's probably gonna be 15, 20 minutes. I don't know, I'll try to make it as short as possible. Like I said, every bass boat's different. Every owner does things a different way. Um, if I had a heated garage or a sealed garage, I wouldn't have taken the batteries out. Some people like to run the gas out, pump it, all that stuff. Do whatever you like. If you think I'm doing something wrong, tell me. If you think I'm doing something right or you have a question or whatever, this is how I do it. This is my first year with this boat. I had the smoker craft for five or six years. Did the exact same things relatively. And uh, 
it works for me. So I'll be back tomorrow with the cleaning, vacuuming, boating stuff, and then we'll put her away for the year. So thank you. Uh, so it is the next day, good mid-morning. It's about 11.30. Just had some breakfast. Um, and we have our 1985 Kirby Micron Magic out and ready. It's cold again today. It's about, it was supposed to be mid fifties. It's only about 45 right now, but I'm just getting it done. So we're gonna vacuum her out real well. I don't know how I'm gonna edit this. It's a lot of footage. I edit a lot. Most of our fishing videos, if we start from this exact spot with the boat, me talking to when I pull back in, I'm usually editing anywhere from like 35, 40 minutes to over an hour of footage, including GoPro. So I've gotten good at trimming down the fat. I always like to leave a little extra, so just bear with me and, you know, winterize your boat. So hang tight. One of my favorite things about doing all of this is that my light pole out here has power. So hang on, let me unplug these Halloween decors. And I just, well, plug it right into here. And then the truck's right here. The boat's right there. I'm gonna pull it forward a bit. And I have power for the power washer, the vacuum, power tools. It's very convenient. I hate that feeling when it's cold outside, but you're working outside, so you get like warm, but then you're cold, then warm, and the weather changing and fall allergies is, and then COVID, so God knows if you're sick or not, or the flu, what, I don't know, just all the nonsense. Uh, but on that note, that's how I'm feeling. The cold, then warm, then cold, then warm. I'm bundled up, but my face is cold. But the boat's clean, vacuumed. All right, well, the vacuuming and interior of the car stuff is done. Got the little power washer. I highly recommend this little guy. The Power Right works uh, 900,000 RPM, whatever. Bought it on Amazon, originally 100 bones. Uh, got it on sale for 80 bucks. Uh, I've had it for just over a year. I've used it to wash the truck, the boat, the lawnmower, the grill, power wash, all this stuff. Um, it's saved me thousands of dollars in car washes, power washing, replacement parts, all that crap. Came with the couple attachments. I'm only using this one right now, but and I got my little turtle wax soap. I'm gonna do the boat, do the truck, and uh, I'll show you the results. Oh. Well, I've been going to town for three hours. Got the truck nice and sparkly. Got the boat nice and sparkly. It's drying out a bit. Um, what I'm going to do next is use my blower, dry out some of the inner cracks and whatnot a little better. And then I'm going to uh, <clears throat> put her back in the garage. We're going to go run some errands. And then either tonight or tomorrow night when I get back from work, I'll... Uh, pull her out and put the cover on. I'm not going to do that tonight. I just want it to be 100% dry. Just an electric Ryobi I bought. It was like 40 bucks. It does the job more than well. And it's not a gas motor. Lifetime warranty. So I use it to dry the truck. Use it to dry the boat. All right. So rundown. <clears throat> Yesterday, took all the gear downstairs, organized it all in the storage room. Took all the boat stuff that stays in the boat out, put it on the shelves in the garage temporarily. Uh, took out the batteries, took them downstairs, stored them on a piece of wood, charged them up. They are fully charged now. Trickle charge awaits. Um, pulled everything out of the boat again, vacuumed it, power washed it, soaped it, uh, air dried it. Um, it's about three o'clock now. Uh, you know, it takes a little bit of time. Take your time, stay organized, know what you're doing, blah, blah, blah. Uh, now I'm going to let it air dry for a little bit. It's almost dry. There's especially like the battery compartments and the electronics. Um, when you put the cover on, you know, you want it to be, and I'm putting all that boat gear back in it to store it for the winter. You want it to be dry and ready to go. Um, so whether it's tonight, I'm thinking probably tomorrow night after work, let it dry out completely. Get in there with a towel if there's anything else I need to do tomorrow night and cover it up. So... Um, I could have done this all in one day. I just chose not to because I don't have the free time this weekend, but I wanted to get it done. So 
an hour-ish yesterday, an hour or two today, and then a half hour. That's about a two, two and a half hour process. Uh, if that, I just take my time. So don't listen to me ramble and I will uh, get back with you. So. All right, so instead of the next day, it's actually three days later because it's decided to rain pretty much every day the past two weeks. So uh, I'm gonna put this cover on now. Um, it's gonna be in the garage covered. So I'm not going to uh, put the poles in or go crazy to town with it. I'm just gonna put it on, but I'll show you how that works. Um, so like I said, I store it in the garage, so I'm not too worried about it getting wet and whatnot. I just know for a fact this garage isn't completely sealed at the bottom and uh, it's dusty, so I just cleaned the heck out of it. You can see it's spit shine clean, but this cover, it's a Dowco cover. It was about 500 bucks. It's made for this boat. I mean, it's, I didn't even put the straps on it and I'm not going to, uh, but it's, tight as could be. I mean, it took a little bit of elbow grease even to get it on, uh, but it fits good, real good. I'm um, all the way around. Um, it's thick too. I mean, even if it got some snow in there, that thing's not gonna stretch too, too bad. Uh, it does have the tracker logo, which is nice, I guess. So it looks nice when it's covered. Um, there's ratchets in here for if it was being towed long range. Um, it has the nice, strap back here to keep it flush with the back of the boat one thing i did realize which i did not buy yet um, i did not buy a motor cover i don't know if that's necessary um, it is the jet so covering it would just be extra dust off of it um fits nice it has all the eyelets like i said ratchet straps again super frothy and it did sorry it's getting dark out it's 6 15. Uh, it did come with all the straps and the extender poles instructions in the box i don't need them uh, i'm obviously going to keep them but she's covered so i'm going to put her back in the garage hang tight i guess uh that's it for the season that's how i winterize my boat like i said the old boat i had for five years 2015 i want to say 2015 2016 uh, either way including this year six years at least I've done it this way um, the entirety of my boat ownership days. Um, nothing's ever failed me. If you see something you think I did wrong, let me know. I'll consider and I'm open-minded. Um, if you think I'm an idiot, let me know. If uh, you think what I did was right, I guess let me know too. If you would do something differently, let me know. Just let me know everything. Tips and tricks, Tony Hawk style tips and tricks. So um, I hope this helps. I know this will probably be about a 20 minute video, but uh, you know, so like I said, I do have some edits saved from this season. It was a slow season, uh, footage wise to COVID and the bite was terrible because of COVID, people out fishing. Um, I do have some edits still to come. Um, I also have all the scrap days. So if you'd like to see some footage of us not catching a ton of fish, but still out there, um, I may post those, let us know. Other than that, that's kind of a wrap for how to winterize your boat and kind of for the season. So I'll get out as much footage as I can. Today's October 28th. So it's gonna be a long November through March 1st. And then you know right where we'll be and uh, as long as there's no pandemic and we have a nice normal winter, then I will be back at it. So I'm gonna leave it off here. Puff, puff, thy mule out. I hope you all have a safe winter. You'll still see more from us. You know, I'm just saying uh, it's not gonna be regular. Winterize your boat, do it smart, do it right. Puff Daddy signing off. Um, swag, thank you. Subscribe. PuffPuffBass.com And just for good measure, fold away tongue is boss. My garage is not huge, but the boat fits. So, Merry Christmas. Puff Puff out.